Who had an amazing time at Shah? Let's hear. This, I think this, go, this can go better. So, how was your time at Shah? Very good. So, Shah is an event which is organized by volunteers, which is run by a lot of angels helping everywhere. So, before we start with this technical infrastructure review, please give a big round of applause, not only to thank all the angels, but to motivate them for the next days for the tear down in, in hell or in rain. So, one big applause. And to give you some insight, what has happened on this event regarding all the infrastructure which was provided here, um, we have this talk. It's tradition to get an overview um, from the various teams. And this year we have the, and now it gets difficult because I have to speak Dutch, uh, the Produktjuhus, which was completely wrong. So, yeah, sorry, German. Um, now it gets easier, we have the Chaos Vermittlung. For everybody who doesn't know what that is, it's the field phones which you found everywhere, like the landlines which you could call, use to call each other. We have the NOC, our Network Operation Center, the PAC, the Phone Operation Center, and Power. So all the things you use all the time and which makes this uh, event much more amazing, much more comfortable, and uh, gave you the possibility to relax on your tent with your cooling gear and stuff and hang out and surf the web and do whatever you wanted and call each other all the time. So, um, let's start with our first group, the ones I can't pronounce right, so I don't try at all. <laughs> Briggs, I think it's you. So, let's start with uh, Production House. We're actually two teams, uh, uh, Team Production House from SHA 2017 and uh, C3VOG, which in total was around uh, 12 people core team. We, had, uh, we did the AV here on stage and the lighting and the LED walls and the sound. We did the FM radio across the road from here. And we, of course, did the video recording and streaming. Um, we had four stages. And we thought we could do with two cameras, video mixers, and, and uh, audio mixers. And we could get enough angels to do that. That was a little doubtful. But in the end, we had 46 angels who did uh, video mixing and audio mixing mostly. We had three remote angels in Berlin and perhaps somewhere else. I don't remember. Um, and they did a lot of uh, editing the talks after uh, they were recorded and before they were released on media.cc.de and on uh, YouTube. Um, I think I can claim to have most leads of everybody else here on this uh, field. Uh, I, I did check it with Team Badge and they uh, admitted that I might have a million or more than them. So. Um, the two uh, screens here in uh, PA and in NO are uh, about half a megapixel each. And the one in uh, RE is uh, 2.3 megapixels, so that makes uh, in total of 3.3 million pixels, aka 3.3 million LEDs. We, at the last check I did, we released uh, 139 videos, which means that we're almost 90% uh, complete on the event of all the talks that we're allowed to record. The most watched video on YouTube had a thousand views, which was the talk uh, on day one from Bill Binney about uh, what the NSA is doing to our privacy. The same talk has 9,700 views on media.cce.de. During the event, we noticed uh, small audio issues left and right, a little uh, hissing and a little uh, humming noises. Um, one of our team fixed that in a FFmpeg source and forgot that he was on a major, new major release. So it was a little exciting putting that live and going like, okay, we'll see. But it worked fine, it's actually working. 
And the highest level of uh, people who watched the stream at a certain point was 125 viewers, which was for the car hacking talk yesterday, I believe. So what went right? Um, once we got started, day-to-day -day work uh, worked fine. We had a few problems with the LED walls, with the resolution. Um, that was resolved on day zero, fortunately, just in time for the event to start. And we had a little audio quality problems which we fixed along the way and we hired a little external audio processing. And on day four, we were at the point where we could uh, record a talk. And before the end of the next talk, we had it released on uh, YouTube and on uh, media.cce.de. So we were almost real time. And now the fun stuff, what went wrong? That. That's uh, moiré because the cameras were picking up the, the individual pixels of the LED wall. So you have this really interference pattern between the CCD chip uh, pixels and the pixels on the LED wall. This, this is, a, high, this is a, a, a picture, a photo of a LED display and then back on the LED display, so the effect is uh, slightly overblown, but this makes this um, causes um, a, a lot of change in, 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 in media from frame to frame, in the picture from frame to frame, which means that the MPEG, has, each new frame is completely new almost, so that you get huge amounts of bandwidth, which in the end someone said, we didn't have enough uh, seconds to put all the megabits in. The uh, encoder machines all crashed, all hung. They, were, they couldn't cope with it, so we had to change the way we rec recorded the video. No cameras di uh, zoomed in on the LED screen. No, uh, and only if you do a total view of the whole stage, do it from far away, and don't move cameras, because moving cameras changes the interference pattern, which adds to the interference, which makes everything blow up even more. Because we had so much pixels being changed every frame, um, we found a few, we think we found a bug in one of the Linux uh, MPEG uh, decoders. Because on one piece of, uh, one of our team members is using, I don't know which player, but it had that color band on the bottom ev on every single video, which had the interference problem with a lot of megabits. So we uh, dialed down the, mega, the, the, the bandwidth that we use on the, video, on the videos, and that problem was solved. And it's not in VLC, but in someone or some else uh, player, in a different player. And we also had a problem. We fixed, we had a bug, a physical bug in the power supply of a switch, of a, of a computer, which resolved in, the, in one of our encoder cubes uh, crashing on day one. And they, uh, fortunately, we had a, a spare supply, power supply, so it was fixed in, I don't know, five minutes or so, but it needed, it, 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 there was a physical bug in the, in the fan, and it died. <laughs> Both of them. <laughs> um, the top graph is the amount of uh, simultaneous viewers in all the streams we had, so radio uh, and for um, stages. And the bottom graph is the CPU load on all the encoders. So you can see there are some peaks, and those are talks where a lot changed on stage. And that's it for uh, Team Production House. Thank you very much. So next up is uh, Chaos Vermittlung. So do you want to plug yourself in? So first, uh, thank you uh, very much uh, for the team. Um, OK, again. Uh, <laughs> You're making fun of me. That's not right. That's not what you also said. OK. Um, <clears throat> yeah, we learned. So one thing we definitely learned is uh, LED f walls make stuff harder if you want to record stuff. Um, <clears throat> I think this was. Uh, one of the big learnings we took away is that um, LED walls might, might sound like a good idea, but aren't so much. So. Yeah.
yeah, we have, we have the perfect person to, to, to fix everything. So in a minute, we'll come to the next team, the team Karls Vermittlung. Um, oh, OK, we, we combined that. OK, I didn't have that information. Um, but fine. So we will not only hear from Karls Vermittlung, but also the POC, the Phone Operation Center. Um, on other events, so in this event, it was, uh, I think that you call it was, uh, micro park, right? Yes. And um, as far as I know, you're quite new. So I, I, you're doing it since some events. But um, yeah, on other events, you have perhaps met Event Phone, but these are not the same guys. It's a new team. And uh, yeah, we'll hear how it was working for them on this event. So. So, Team POC, yes. So, some key facts uh, uh, on what we did. So, there's a lot of cabling al already. Oh, really close. Like, really close. Like okay. Eating it. Like eating it. Okay. There's really a lot of amount of cable already in the ground on the whole field. So, we just had to add a rough uh, three and a half kilometers of extra cabling to deploy your, uh, you with uh, over 28 base stations for the DEC network. And we did it with a hub and spoke model. So, there was not like one single point where all of the deck station connected to, rather than some hubs uh, where we all connected them, so we didn't have to have like 20 kilometers of cable, so just three and a half. Um, and we, uh, we had the system up and running, uh, at least in the core area, on day minus four. And uh, it ran without an interruption, even when the power failed, because we have... Uh, like batteries in our stuff. So uh, it worked quite well, even when the Tetra failed. So, uh, so basically, this is our plan, what we did. So uh, there, uh, you can see all, the, all, your, all your fields and all the cabling and all the stuff. And the blue stuff you can't really see on the LED walls, those are our phone uh, PBXs, so the, the, really the switches where all the decks connect. So a lot of base stations, a lot of fancy stuff. It worked. Um, so some facts about the, the usage. Um, we had over uh, 750 registered decked. Um, you registered over 180 zip accounts, which were actually used quite a lot, and we provided our over 200, uh, over 35 de desk phones for the stages, for the info tent, for wherever you needed a desk phone. Um, some of them via zip, some of them directly connected to the PBX, depending on how much cable we needed uh, to get them running. And the zip phones were provisioned by, our, by us on day zero. And the last one got up on day two because uh, it took the knock very long to get our VLANs running and so on. But they worked. Um, so, our phones. Uh, some other fun facts. You basically called the whole world. We had calls to India, the Vatican, China, and even North Korea. <laughs> Uh, and we had some nasty f copper squirrels cutting our cables, connecting the deck base stations to our main PBXs. And uh, so we did a search and recovery, and it took us under two hours to get the base station running again. Um, there were nearly 14 hours of incoming calls and over 150 calls, uh, hours of outgoing calls. Uh, I basically called Germany, the Netherlands, and Austria in that, uh, the, how it appears is how much you called it. Um, and the longest single call was to Valles and Futuna. I don't know where it is, uh, so we Googled it. It's somewhere in the Pacific. <laughs> the, the call was over two and a half hours. So, the, the nasty copper squirrel. Hi, I'm SJA from Chaos Vermittlung. We do the field telephone. 
So, yeah, we have this switch, manual switch board, and it's battery operated, so we do not have any battery outage or uh, do not depend on power supply. Some key facts, we have 60 switches capacity plus 10 additional for Orga. We deployed 25 field phones. There are 11 public field phones around. We also connected to teletype writers over our switchboard. Also, we have uh, a DSLAM. We provide field DSL. So there were three DSL lines in use, including Wi-Fi for logistic entrance. We deployed it at, I think, 2 o'clock in the morning because they were sitting out there without power, phone, and Wi-Fi. So we say, hey, let's get a golf cart and drive there and deploy a field DSL. It took, I think, until 4 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. The longest cable was 1.4 kilometer for the parking. Uh, we deployed 13, uh, uh, 7 kilometers cable and have 24, 5 starting at uh, D minus 1. We have two angels normally at the switchboard. They, sometimes they had a lot to do because they are ringing all the time. Sometimes it was not very useful for a POC because they are thinking, hey, ringing, 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 but it was okay. So, some public field phone. We also do a little description. Uh, it was at the beginning, there was, hey, please press the button in the ringer because you can't speak. But at the end of the event, it will was okay. So, we also had a free, con we have four connections to the deck and to the PBX, and there was with 15, I think at last with 20 uh, users, uh, a conference call with field telephone with four uh, countries. Okay, and there were also f at least five people, they bought a new field telephone for the next event, and you also had to do, because we have at least 120 channels to also connect you. So, thank you very much. Uh, we definitely see that um even when messengers and stuff comes up, we still stay with phones and we go kind of back to reliant uh, good technology and stay with us. So who of you has used one of these uh, field phones? Ah, quite a bunch. Who will do this next time? Because you know, just learned about it. <laughs> okay, so we did perhaps have to get this into the opening and just not just in the end. So everybody knows what to look for. So. Uh, we do the questions at the very end for all the teams. So, now we come to NOC, the Network Operations Center. Um, to be honest, I haven't seen as much this use more bandwidth signs as other years, but I think there were still some left, but I think you will give us all the information we need now. So, here you go. Hi. <laughs> Hi, I am Wilco from NOC, and this is uh, Aryan. Um, I'll let him explain about the vision. Oh, uh, <laughs> next one. Yeah. Yeah. So, like at previous uh, hacker events like CCC and EMF, uh, our vision is mostly still the same. We want to give you gigabit and 10 gigabit Ethernet to your tent and give you a very fast experience. We want to give you decent Wi-Fi. It should be privacy enhanced. Filter-free net neutrality trademark. Oh, no. And password compliance. Oh, and uh, compliance. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes. Uh, 
And um, most importantly, we want to have a lot of fun building the network. Yeah, so we're running mostly on donated hardware, uh, which is very nice. Thank you, guys, um, who, uh, who give us stuff. Um, so we mostly got data center switches and data center routers. And they're not really campus routers. So we have some design constraints there. Um, so you cannot terminate a really large VLAN on some, a box that cannot handle very large VLANs. Um, so that um, gives us some um, restraints on our design. Um, but still, uh, we were able to do most of the stuff uh, with just a few gaps on, on our own stuff this time. Um, yeah, so we only filled some, uh, some gaps, um, uh, mainly the, the uplink stuff and a few switches that were used in the core. So all in all, pretty good. So um, the concept, um, well, you did most of this stuff, so. <laughs> <You'll>, uh... <laughs> yeah, so this time um, there were already uh, three data centers on site which we could use and just put equipment in. So that was very nice. Uh, that is N0, E0, and L0. And N0 is uh, on the street. And the uh, L0 building is uh, very nearby here. And E0 is the one in the middle of the big field. And um, all of the dot and glows, uh, except for I think only six or seven, uh, are actually uplinked with uh, a 10 gigabit uh, single fiber. So we're using just one strand of fiber and putting two colors in there to get a full duplex connection. And uh, this year, we decided to um, do uh, routing uh, already in the dot and close. So that's by the principle of route early and route often. And um, the, the reason we did this is to uh, offload the, um, the uh, distribution routers, which are not really built for routing lots of users. So we, this is a very good way of offloading that. Um, <laughs> Yeah, we use routing protocols, of course, to distribute routes across all of the networks. Uh, we're also using DHP relay this year, which is something we haven't tried for years because it always sucked and didn't work. And but this year it seemed to work, so that's nice. Um, there are some uh, switches that don't do um, routing, don't do layer three. Those are just terminated at the nearest data and and it's routed uh, right over there. Um, also, for Wi-Fi, we uh, use uh, Aruba access points, and they um, tunnel all the traffic to the controller, so that also fits nicely in this design. Oh, I'll do this one as well. <laughs> uh, for the planning, um, uh, we used uh, QCAT, uh, and we're working together with uh, Team Terrain, and uh, all of the stuff is... Uh, published on uh, map.shout2017.org. If you're interested, you can go there. You can enable the knock layer. You can see where all the data and close and all the cables are going. But we were using all of that stuff to, um, to, to calculate the length of all the fibers and then use a script to assign all the fibers. And that's, this was actually needed because we have around uh, 50 fibers going across the terrain. So it would be tedious to figure out the right fiber for the right path. Um, this year we also used uh, a web-based diagramming tool. It's called draw.io, and uh, it's pretty nice. Uh, you can put all kinds of metadata in there, and um, we actually use that to um, yeah, create our topology and also use that for, for scripting and config generation. Uh, since last CCC, we've also been using Netbox for uh, IP administration, and this also... <laughs> oh. We have some fans, I guess. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so, but this has also worked out pretty nicely. It's also good for uh, integrating with your config generation uh, scripts and that kind of stuff. Uh, and uh, uh, like I already said, the, uh, the scouting Landgoed here, they uh, invest, invested quite, quite a bit in their uh, on-site infrastructure. And they already have these three utility buildings and uh, 11 field boxes, uh, which have eight cores of single mode fiber. And this is really, really awesome because it saves us a sh uh, really shit ton of work. So kudos to uh, scouting. <laughs> So yeah, some figures. Um, so we have three data centers, right? One that has the uplink, and we have two for our cores, uh, which is essentially completely distributed because 
Um, we don't have very large boxes that can route. We have the, the uh, data center routing boxes. So we separated all the visitor and orga VLANs and uh, essentially had uh, six routers in our core um, and then the, the uplink router and that, all that stuff. It was basically fully redundant except for the services. Um, yeah, we made uh, 50 fiber cables, I think a bit more actually, but at least uh, we went well over 9,000 uh, meters of uh, fiber. Um, yes, it is. So, <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, 75 access switches that were deployed in the field um, in all these dot and close uh, and in some tents. Um, well, the edge routers, access points, 300 transceivers were used. That's basically how many links we had active and used for, used for our routing. Flex Sponsored by Flex Optics. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. uh, I basically already talked a little bit about that. Yeah, yeah so um, <laughs> you <can't do. laughs> wow. we seem to be missing some pixels. Um, <laughs> because our network is slightly larger than the screen can display. Um, but yeah, we separated the, the visitor orga Wi-Fi. Um, and uh, oh yeah, we had four times uh, 40 gig uplinks to the edge routers. So um, that's, well, that was enough. <laughs> um, and we did, uh, for layer two redundancy, we used MCLAG, that's multi-chassis link aggregation. Um, so that if one of the uh, data centers would actually lose power, then everything would still work. Um, so that actually worked out pretty well. Um, yeah, because of uh, routing constraints, it is actually. So we took some advice from some local village people. <laughs> Yeah, so. <laughs> well, um, so basically we ran OSPF in the core and that was for redundancy purposes mostly. Um, yeah, the village people told us to. Um, so yeah, we also had a, a fiber splicing party. Um, we uh, had it on the 8th of July, where we basically invited people to come learn how to splice. Um, and uh, we did about 100 splices. Um, and I'm pleased to say I did less than a quarter of them. <laughs> um, and the rest was done by all new people that just came in and wanted to learn how to do this. Um, and that's really, really great, because uh, we had a lot of new fibers to unroll um, and basically we test them and fix them. Um, and uh, yeah, thanks everyone for showing up there because um, that was really, really helpful. Um, one of the new fibers just for the parking lot to give the angels that have the long shifts there to give them some internet, we actually made a new fiber of 666 meters long. Um, and uh, also was used for ticket scanning there, but uh, mostly for the angels that sit there because they're really doing a good job there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah, you cannot read this, okay. <laughs> I will share the slides afterwards. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, so um, Uplink was easy this year, I guess. Um, it was a 59-kilometer uh, uh, dark fiber pro uh, provided by UNET, and oh. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we have a fan. Okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 
and it's going from the site here to, uh, towards uh, Nikhev. And uh, but the fiber was already here on site because uh, Scouting invested in uh, getting fiber here uh, to the site, and they already have a permanent connection. Uh, here installed and we can use two spare fiber cores for that. Uh, we only had 13.5 uh, dB of loss uh, over this distance, so that's it's very, very nice. Um, two Juniper MX240s uh, we had installed, one on site and one in NICAF, and um, uh, we used an interesting bit of equipment to uh, do 100 gig, which is a um, tunable, coherent 100 gigabit transceiver, and it can fit uh, this in a 50 gigahertz channel. And um, that al also gave us the opportunity to make a backup uplink uh, using uh, DWDM muxes. So we actually had a 100 gig and a 10 gig backup, so 110 gigabit of uplink. Um, yeah, so transits and IP. So. Um, we got an AS number from Surfnet and a slash 20 of IP space that we can use for um, at least this year, um, which was very nice. And we got, uh, that's basically what we used for bootstrapping everything. Then we uh, got a slash 16 of IP space from RIPE, which is basically a t temporary assignment. Um, so we could give everyone a public IP address, um, which is basically completely unfiltered and uh, you have a public IP, do with it what you want. Um, Event Infra has a slash six, uh, 32 IPv6 space, which is enough. And we used, uh, well, three slash 48s, I think, um, for this event. Um, so yeah, let's, uh, well, thank our upstreams, actually. Um, Entity provided us uh, with 100 gig of bandwidth, um, plus 10 gig for our backup link. Uh, Core Backbone gave us uh, 100 gig. Surfnet gave us 10 gig plus uh, the AS and slash 20, and then we had a 10 gig peering on NLAX, uh, and basically it was all done zero budget, which is very nice. <laughs> well, this is definitely your area. Oh. <laughs> Um, yeah, so we, um, like at previous hacker events, we uh, used uh, Aruba setup again. Um, this time, two 7210 controllers, and we were for the first time running our Aruba OS 8.1. So it's a sort of a test setup, uh, and there is also a, it's what they call a mobility master, which is a virtual machine that does a lot of the uh, coordination between all the, the, the two controllers. And um, it seemed to work out OK, but we had some issues with the uh, auto channel assignment um, where it, yeah, some of the channel assignment didn't make any sense. So we had to tune that just to do some st static channel uh, planning around that. Uh, um, 120 access points we have deployed, and we've seen um, at peak 2,800 clients and about a gigabit of uh, traffic. Uh, in the end, we've, yeah, we've seen about 7,400 uh, devices on the Wi-Fi, so that's, uh, I think, we'll get to that, but a lot of them are badges, so. <laughs> uh, on the bottom graph, there's also, but you can, you can also go back, go to dashboard.sha2017.cam to see this bottom graph. Uh, it's actually a graph that shows uh, how much clients are connected in a certain area, where you can see uh, possibly what, which uh, talk would be the most interesting, so you can see it by track tent or by uh, field uh, uh, field name. So, um, well, we got some complaints on Twitter and uh, also stating like, is this 2.4 gigahertz that? And maybe the question is, yeah, yeah, pretty much, yeah. Uh, uh, this is a graph that shows uh, the, the 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 top. 10 most utilized uh, um, access points, which has they, they, it's the highest airtime utilization. So we see some access, here, access points here that are almost at 100% channel utilization. So at that point, it becomes absolutely unusable. And also one of the causes is that people also are bringing their own access points and not sticking to a certain channel plan. So that is just making the problem even worse. We've seen around uh, 200 of those uh, access points which are, do not belong to us, but just people have brought into their village, or maybe they have like a personal hotspot enabled on their telephone, but that makes the problem even worse. And 
uh, in a site like this where everything is open, uh, the, the 2.4 gigahertz problem is uh, kind of shitty, yeah. Uh, we have some obligatory usernames and realm stats. We also offered Edrome and SpaceNet here, so um, not much exciting stuff going on here. Uh, for some reason, there's a lot of people from Norway here, so... Uh. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, so uh, like we said, we had three uh, data centers, um, and they were pretty packed not just with our stuff, but also with stuff from POC and VOC. Um, so basically all the uh, pink cables on here, that's all basically POC. And uh, the flight case next to it is Steam sysadmin and, uh, and our own servers. Um, and uh, here you see a whole lot of our fiber patches, which is basically the fiber patches uh, that we patch through through the data enclose uh, using the field boxes from, uh, from the scouting terrain. Um, but yeah, they were pretty, pretty uh, full um, because, uh, well, just count the flight cases that have to fit in this tiny little bunker. Um, but uh, we managed to get the aircons in and all the flight cases stacked nicely. Um, so yeah, that was uh, pretty cool. Uh, oh yeah, so IPv6 users was a little disappointing. Um, 21%. At some point, actually, was pretty bit, pretty high uh, because somebody was apparently doing some downloads with 10 gig over to IPv6, and then it worked quite well. Um, but um, yeah, most of our stuff is actually on Wi-Fi these days. So there were um, what's this? 7.83k of uh, users on uh, Wi-Fi and only uh, 913 on uh, on wired. Um, which uh, is interesting, especially for the routers that do the Wi-Fi. Um, but uh, yeah, a lot of traffic. We actually peaked above 10 gig uh, for, the, um, uh, for the uplink. It's both incoming at some point and um, on, the, on the downstream, uh, uh, upstream that is. Um, so the getting 100 gig here was uh, worth our time because uh, otherwise we couldn't have handled that little peak. <laughs> um, yeah, well, uh, we've seen about 2,000 badges or something we've um, classified as uh, expressive. So uh, it's pretty good, I guess. That's uh, more than half of the badges that have been handed out have at least been on Wi-Fi, so it's good. Fiber to the boat. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure what I'm looking at. So uh, this uh, this is the problem. We've been editing this slide deck with six people. So. Uh, <laughs> um, so uh, you see here fiber basically mounted to the pier with duct tape, um, and uh, there's a fiber rule in a. Um, well, that's, uh, I think, uh, one of the tires that's uh, a spacer between the boats and the pier as well, that where we have a little loop. Um, but uh, yeah, we actually spent quite some time getting fiber to everywhere, including to the boats. Um, we also learned some lessons, um, because the, the Wi-Fi, uh, that did not really work out too well on the data center routing switches. Fortunately, we had the MX240s that would... Uh, um, uh, that could fix it for us, which we basically got on loan from Juniper. Um, so there was a s tiny switchover point where we um, um, moved, uh, I think, about 3,000 users over from one router to another that could actually do uh, the big slash 18 of uh, Wi-Fi space. Slash 19? Oh. Oh, well. Um, and um, doing OSPF with four vendors on hundreds of link uh, required a bit of coordination to plug everything into the right port because everything was numbered. Um, we also had some crashes. Um, I'm not sure if you could see it, but uh, this is basically the day since last Quagga crash. Um, yeah, we had to fix that a little bit. 
But uh, oh, and we, we fixed it. Bird. The bird, bird, bird. The bird's a winner. Well, the bird, bird, bird. The bird is a winner. Well, the bird, bird, bird. Well, the bird is a winner. So, if if you don't recognize it, that was obviously the word. Bird is the word. Um, so we switched all the cumulus boxes over from Quagga to Bird, and then the network was stable. So uh, Bird is the word, actually. <laughs> um, so yeah. <laughs> Thanks, whoever did that. We'll uh, wear gloves during teardown. So, the Datenklo logs weren't exactly secure, but at least nobody pooped in the Datenklo this time. Oh. Yes, you want to tell about this? Oh yeah, so <laughs> we're running this, uh, these ArtNet lamps on every Datenklo and you know, we didn't really bother securing it and some people noticed. So the Italian embassy, they kind of um, hacked our, of compromised our own, uh, nice little ArtNet infrastructure. Uh, yeah, check out the link. Uh, it's on the wiki somewhere. There's, there was a nice lightning talk about this. Uh, and so the Artnet is actually DMX over Ethernet. And um, um, we didn't bother securing it. And uh, it was, they are basically accessible from, uh, throughout the network because we're running this nice little routed network. And we didn't bother to put any access list on there. So um, you, you might still have a couple of hours to try this out, or if you can find out where the, the things are connected in the network. But. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, right now, actually, the abuse was is um, it's it's actually ramping up. So we'll probably receive some more in the next week or so, um, because um, I think uh, we had to shut down the mail client now because uh, there was uh, like 15 coming in every minute. But uh, um, we got uh, when we made the slides, we had 380 abuse emails, uh, mostly automated stuff. Um, and mostly caused by a few people scanning the entire network. Um, and there were some serious hacking attempts actually made from our network. Uh, we had to act on that, obviously, um, basically by uh, making sure that uh, that destination was protected. Um, so um, any traffic to that destination was, uh, was dropped from that point on. Um, because, uh, well, yeah, scanning is nice, but uh, intruding into other boxes is, uh, yeah, not a thing. Not without permission. Um, yeah, so we, we actually mentioned most of the supporters already. Um, but um, yeah, these are actually um, everyone that made the network possible. Um, so yeah, please give a big round of applause to all our sponsors. <laughs> Yeah, then we have a general announcement. Um, goodbye. Sad to see you go. Um, network uh, will be torn down at uh, 6, uh, so the camping fields will lose their active equipment after 6. Um, and uh, on Thursday, everything will be gone. Be kind to a fibers and see you at Congress. Okay, thank you very much, dear Nock. It's uh, always a pleasure to have you and to have internet everywhere running all the time. Now we come to the next group, it's power. So, uh, yes. Um, perhaps you can't see this there, but um, there's a puddle on the stage and it's dripping off this lamp. Can you tell me perhaps if this is still secure? <laughs> I'm not sure. So perhaps it's good we're tearing down. So um, yeah, let's hear from you, Team Power. <laughs> All right, everyone. So we got a little bit short notice on uh, doing this presentation. So I did not make a new set of slides. So I'm working directly from our master power plan. <laughs> OK. 
okay. It's okay. The notes. The, impor ah. the, bo the important notes are on the back, so. Uh, okay. So, um, we got uh, lots of infrastructure moved here onto this terrain uh, by our supplier. It was, I think, uh, five trucks, uh, truckloads worth of stuff, including uh, 10 generators, eight of which uh, have been running. One of them uh, was a cold spare that we uh, had here just in case. Uh, and the other one uh, was at the uh, uh, South Family uh, Village, uh, basically as a, as a backup or overflow field. So it was not turned on because, uh, well, unfortunately, uh, some, some more people could have shown up, apparently. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's the eight generators. Uh, and we had a, basically an installed capacity of 1.2 megawatts of power. Uh, and this power was then fed into some 300 distribution boxes uh, running uh, about 20 kilometers of various uh, cabling. These 20 kilometers uh, were mostly, I mean, this, 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 these many kilometers come from the lots of Shuku blocks and Shuku extension cores that power like all the emergency lightings and everything here. Um, but uh, there's also uh, about, uh, what did we say? Uh, for example, there's about uh, 3.5 kilometers of really heavy, uh, really thick 400 amp cable uh, that, we, uh, that we used uh, to feed the power from the generator to some of the uh, main uh, distribution boxes. And of course, these cables uh, are like really heavy. Power usage, um, as I said, uh, we don't have any uh, uh, fancy statistics available just yet. Uh, that is mostly because uh, nobody uh, stepped up uh, to do some uh, monitoring infrastructure for the cable uh, or for the, for, the, for, the, for the generators uh, or the generator cable, which really is a shame, but uh, it cannot be helped. Um, so the statistic, statistical usage data is basically from us doing manual rounds from time to time to check on the generator load. Uh, we can say roughly that we have been use, using the generator power between like 10 and 35% of the uh, capacity. Uh, for example, we have like one dedicated generator for uh, this field with these two track tents because the team uh, production house or whatever that is pronounced uh, asked us for a lot of power for the shiny lead walls. Uh, but then, uh, as you may know, they have been turned down to 10%, so also the power requirement is only at 10%, uh, so that generator now is set mostly idle. Um, the most interesting uh, generators, the generator powering the huge field like uh, Olsen and uh, connected fields, uh, we had put two generators there to do a little bit of load balancing and for a little bit of redundancy. Um, these generators um, in the evenings were typically putting out about 130 kilowatts. Since we know that the pizza oven uh, draws about uh, 14 kilowatts, uh, that makes about 10% of that power that was invented or that was invested in very nice tasting pizza. And I think that was a worthwhile investment. <laughs> uh, now to the, uh, uh, well, not so party uh, part, which is like uh, the work that has been uh, put in. It was mostly a team of about uh, uh, 10 angels uh, during uh, a build up that have been working since uh, Saturday, basically from the morning till it was dark, uh, pu putting out uh, all these heavy cables uh, so that we could then uh, get up and running by Wednesday, more or less uh, within the time. We were, I think, two, two hours late from our internal plans, if I remember correctly, uh, but that did not uh, really matter. We had some small equipment trouble, but that could be solved. Um, and yeah, what, what else can we say? Uh, in terms of power, not everything was on generator power. We had some stuff um, that was uh, kept powered by the scouting grid, uh, ma mainly for the knock people, so that there was some redundancy. Uh, so we could use uh, parts of the uh, uh, power that the scouting uh, uh, people have here, so we have to thank them for that, or actually you have to thank for them. 
Um, and now uh, it's about Teardown. Uh, Teardown will also, uh, we will start uh, tonight uh, after the, the NOC uh, has uh, Put that or turn, turned off uh, all their stuff. We will start slowly uh, uh, disconnecting uh, the remote parts of the power grid, uh, and we will see how many people are still here and still need power. Uh, but most likely, uh, you should expect that power goes out uh, tonight uh, at some at some some point point of time for most of the fields. Uh, some some as I said, some fields and some areas will continue to have power. For example, the harbor they need it uh, till tomorrow. Uh, but that's that. And here's a final request. Um, since we have to move all these heavy cables again, uh, we will put out uh, crates uh, at various locations. Um, request one, uh, please do not use these crates for trash. They are for cables. <laughs> yeah, you would be surprised, but we've seen in, in, in past events with our cable crates. So. <laughs> Um, and uh, uh, request two, uh, when you see some of our power angels then uh, curling up the cables and you've got some five minutes of time, if everyone just helps with one cable, then everything uh, can be uh, uh, put into the crates in essentially no time. Uh, and that's, that would be really helpful. Thank you. <laughs> So, this were our teams, and uh, even if you thank all of them independently, I would please ask for a big round of applause for all our infrastructure teams and all the other angels at SHA 2017. So, now we have some minutes left, so you have the chance to get your questions out. If you want to know something about it, the first one is already running up there. Okay. Hello, hello. So, please, to who are your, is your question? First to all of you. Me. Two words. Love it. <laughs> Thank you. The second is a question. I need all of you. I want to have another event like this before in two year, uh, four years. So please help me. I'm organizing it. I'm Eric. You don't need to mean more. But I need all of you, and I have a present for you, and I do this off stage. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. <laughs> do we have any more questions? Yes. Yeah. I've got a question for Nock. Um, so with the pixel flood screen in the bar, what was the peak traffic of that? Do you know that? Do you know that? Uh, there was around uh, 3 gigabits. So next question, yes? I have the same question about your location. Sorry? Your location. How much traffic was there from into your location at peak? I think it peaked. It's network, I think. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think they peaked around 10 gigabit or something. That was all they got, so they, uh, okay. they filled it up nicely. <laughs> so, do we have more questions? Okay, not at the time. Um, yes, so thank you again for your amazing work for all the effort you put in. Thank you, all the angels. Thank all the visitors who are here. Um, yes, one last big final applause for this amazing event and the closing coming up. <laughs> <laughs>